SCP-106, Keter Class, Special Containment Procedures, Revision 11-8. No physical interaction with SCP-106 is allowed at any time. All physical interaction must be approved by no less than a two-thirds vote from O5 Command. Any such interaction must be undertaken in AR2 maximum security sites after a general non-essential staff evacuation. All staff, research, security, class D, etc., are to remain at least 60 meters away from the containment cell at all times, except in the event of breach events. SCP-106 is to be contained in a sealed container comprised of lead-lined steel. The container will be sealed within 40 layers of identical material, each layer separated by no less than 36 centimeters of empty space. Support struts between layers are to be randomly spaced. Container is to remain suspended no less than 60 centimeters from any surface by ELOIID electromagnetic supports. Secondary containment is to be comprised of 16 spherical cells, each filled with various fluids and a random assembly of surfaces and supports. Secondary containment is to be fitted with light systems, capable of flooding the entire assembly with no less than 80,000 lumens of light instantly, with no direct human involvement. Both containment areas are to remain under 24-hour surveillance. Any corrosion observed on containment cell surfaces, staff members, or other site locations within 200 meters of SCP-106 are to be reported to site security immediately. Any object or personnel lost to SCP-106 are to be deemed missing or killed in action. No recovery attempts are to be made under any circumstances. Note. Continued research and observation have shown that when faced with highly complex or random assemblies of structures, SCP-106 can be confused, showing a marked delay on entry and exit from said structure. SCP-106 has also shown an aversion to direct, sudden light. This is not manifested in any form of physical damage, but a rapid exit to the pocket dimension generated on solid surfaces. These observations, along with those of lead aversion and liquid confusion, have reduced the general escape incidence by 43%. The primary cells have also been effective in recovery incidents requiring recall protocol. The primary cells have also been effective in recovery incidents requiring recall protocol. Dash, dash. Observation is ongoing. Description. SCP-106 appears to be an elderly humanoid with a general appearance of advanced decomposition. This appearance may vary, but the rotting quality is observed in all forms. SCP-106 is not exceptionally agile and will remain motionless for days at a time, waiting for prey. SCP-106 is also capable of scaling any vertical surface and can remain suspended upside down indefinitely. When attacking, SCP-106 will attempt to incapacitate prey by damaging major organs, muscle groups, or tendons, then pull disabled prey into its pocket dimension. SCP-106 appears to prefer human prey items between 10 and 25 years of age. SCP-106 causes a corrosion effect in all solid matter it touches, engaging a physical breakdown in materials several seconds after contact. This is observed as rusting, rotting, and cracking of materials, and the creation of a black, mucus-like substance similar to the material coating SCP-106. This effect is particularly detrimental to living tissue and is assumed to be a pre-digestion action. Corrosion continues for six hours after contact, after which the effect appears to burn out. SCP-106 is able to vanish inside solid matter, entering what is assumed to be a form of pocket dimension. SCP-106 is then able to exit this dimension from any point connected to the initial entry point. Examples, entering the inner room of a wall and exiting the outer wall, or entering a wall and exiting from the ceiling. It is unknown if this is the point of origin for SCP-106, or a simple lair it has created. Limited observation of this pocket dimension has shown it to be comprised mostly of halls and rooms with entry. 
This activity can continue for days, with some subjected individuals being released for the express purpose of hunting, recapture, Addendum. SCP Review Notes. Due to the exceedingly difficult to contain nature of SCP-106, SCP is to be reviewed every three months or during a post-breach incident. Physical restraints are impossible, and direct physical damage appears to have no effect on SCP-106. Current SCP, as of <laughs> revolves around basic observation and immediate response. Previous, more proactive special containment procedures have been recalled due to the events of breaches and Notes on behavior. SCP-106 appears to go through long periods of dormancy, in which it will remain completely motionless for up to three hours. The cause for this is unknown. However, it has been shown that this appears to be used as a lulling tactic. SCP-106 will emerge from this state in a very agitated state, and will attack and abduct staff and cause gross damage to its containment cell and the site at large. Recall Protocol SCP-106 appears to hunt and attack based on desire, not hunger. SCP-106 will attack and collect multiple prey items during a hunting behavior incident, keeping many alive in the pocket dimension for extended periods of time. SCP-106 has no determinable limit and appears to collect a random number of prey items during an event. The inner dimension accessed by SCP-106 appears to be only accessible by SCP-106. Recording and transmission devices have been shown to still operate inside this dimension, though recordings and transmissions are very degraded. It appears that SCP-106 will play with captured prey, and appears to have full control of time, space, and perception inside this dimension. SCP-106 appears Recall Protocol dash dash in the event of a breach event by SCP-106, a human within the 10 to 25 years of age bracket will be prepped for recall, with the compromised containment cell being replaced and restored for use. When the cell is ready, the lure subject will be injured, preferably via the breakage of a long bone, such as the femur, or the severing of a major tendon, such as the Achilles. Lure subject will be placed in the prepped cell, and the sound emitted by said subject will be transmitted over the site public address system. SCP-106 will typically begin to gravitate toward the lure subject within 10 to 15 minutes after hearing the subject. Should SCP-106 not respond to the initial broadcast, additional physical trauma is to be administered to the lure subject at 20 minute intervals until SCP-106 responds. Multiple lure subjects may be used in the case of major breach events. SCP-106 will typically enter a dormant state after finishing with a lure subject. In addition, subjects may...